all on. If y'all don't start commenting and sharing and subscribing, it's going to be me and y'all. Yeah. Stop playing with me. Comment. Hello, my fault. Go to the video. Hello. Some of that royalty. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Nick G, the host, and today I'm back with another reaction video. Before we go any further, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. You dig what I'm saying and what got them hair your league. So, um, if y'all don't know, Tay and Lou broke up. Uh, I recently had a situation with my girlfriend as well, which is another reason why I would love to react to this. Um, check out my couple's channel. It's Royalties in Candyland. Um, link is in the description, and you can find it on my page. Um, but yeah, we're going to react to this video because they're finally telling everybody why they broke up. They've been talking for five minutes about how nervous they are. So I think we got the jitters out the way. So let's get it. Like we broke up and I'm, here's the thing. You guys heard Tay said she's going to speak for herself. Mm -hmm. So going forward and throughout this whole video, I'm going to speak for myself. I personally felt, feel, <laughs> felt because you know, this is kind of not old to us, but. I personally feel like we broke up because I lost myself. I felt like I introduced myself to her in a way that I wasn't ready to uphold. Um, I lost myself. So how could she love something that I didn't even know? Even know? So I lost myself completely. Okay, that's a fair answer. That's and real. For me, I feel like we broke up from my perspective, of course, again, separate perspectives, because I sat, I, I I sacrificed a lot, but I didn't feel like the sacrifices were being met. Okay, so ain't that some shit? The exact same thing. I think everybody is going through this shit right now. I have two different perspectives on this, which is interesting because we never really talked about it together. Why we felt like we broke up, we kind of just did. <laughs> And, yeah. um, and here we are in front of you guys right, having so, this conversation. Yeah, this is the first time we're unloading Jesus. it. You, yeah, no, you, you, cool. okay. It sounds See, better out loud. Right, and here we go, come right back. Okay. It sounds so much better out loud. I'm telling you. <laughs> now welcome, welcome back. To expand on how I lost myself. Boy, when you talk about this shit out loud, I'm going to talk to y'all because we, we in such a better space, but okay. So um, I'm pretty much going to piggyback on what Tay said a little bit. Um, a lot of sacrifices were made in our relationship for me um i have no other way of putting that they were made for me mm -hmm. and because of said sacrifices because i were not i was not in a place mentally to see those sacrifices as sacrifices mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is i was not filling up her cup i was not i was not being i was not reciprocating the love and the sacrifices that were being given to me and there came a point in our relationship where I started to hear her, like she was saying over and over what she needed from me, over and over what she needed from me. And I would just sulk away, go into the room, sulk away, go into the room, wouldn't give her anything in her, wouldn't give her what she needed. And all the while, while I would go sulk away in that room, I would go and I would drink in that room. Mm. Um, I would drink and then I would go to sleep, aka pass out. Mm. And all of these sacrifices that she was making for me and me ignoring all of these sacrifices and me falling deeper and deeper into my depression, I was in no mental state to give her back what she needed from me. Um, I saw her drowning. Mm. I saw her asking and asking and pleading and pleading something from me that you guys, I could not give her. Um, I didn't have it in myself to give. I didn't have it in myself to give to myself, let alone to another person that was dealing with outside stressors. Mm -hmm. And no one should have an excuse and say, oh, because something outside of you, this is why you treat me this way. However, that's my story. Um, I drank. That's what I did to, to cope with my depression. Mm -hmm. I drank. And you guys, me drinking, it didn't just stop there. I became unworkable. She couldn't work with me. Mm -hmm. um, we were full-time YouTubers. And I was expected to wake up in the morning refreshed, bright-eyed, and bushy-tailed. However, if I was drinking the whole night, before in the room crying by myself because I'm so depressed and I see my girlfriend crying out for something that she needs that I can't give her. Mm. I drank it away. I couldn't work the next morning. I was too- Damn, you being real honest. You better go ahead. <laughs> I drank it away. I drank it away. 
drank it all the way in that room with music and with a bottle of whatever. And no, at that time, honey, <laughs> it was malt liquor. Um, so, mm. um, honey, <laughs> I'm from D.C., don't play with me. But no, Damn. it remained serious. Um, yes, I drank it away. So when it was time to work, I couldn't work. And what can I do? I couldn't love her back. Couldn't be a good work partner. Couldn't do it. So, damn. I, I hear you. Damn, I wasn't expecting all of this. Damn, damn, damn. All right, so I'll be I'll be real with where, where I went wrong as well because neither one of us is perfect in this situation. So, yes, I do feel like there were some things I sacrificed for Lou. You guys know I moved. I changed my location um, to be closer to her family and things like that. I didn't really have friends out here. I, I still don't really have friends out here. I still live here, okay? Um, but... I kind of enthralled myself within her life to help to help to help see her win because you know we work together to help see each other win. But I'm very much like I'm that type of partner. Like I need you know she I could tell she was unhappy you know being far away from the the the, the biggest part of her life, which is her daughter. So I had to make that move. We had to do that. Um, but in making that move, I kind of neglected what it would mean for me, and because. I made that move, Lou and Lou's family became solely what I was surrounded by. So I depended on Lou to always be good with me because the minute she wasn't good with me, I kind of lost contact with everybody. I, would, I, I couldn't, I mean, I could go to the social events because her family is very accepting, but I would feel uncomfortable because, you know, me and her are not well, so what I look like just showing up and things like that. And mm -hmm. I started to feel a little bit isolated. Mm -hmm. And in me feeling isolated, I had to find a way to cope with that isolation. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anybody out here. Where we live in Delaware, it's kind of like you had to grow up here for you to really, you know, know people. If you didn't grow up here, you're not going to know anybody. If you don't, you know, work here, I don't go to like, you know, a physical job of an entrepreneur. I did things of that sort. So going to something required you to already know people. I didn't know people. So the only thing I could go to, unfortunately, was a casino. That's the only place I could socialize. And from that, I started to gamble more than I wanted to. I wanted a social connection. I felt a high and a thrill from that. And I was very lonely when, you know, I was struggling with her and, you know, and, and things of that sort. And I started to resent her because you know when you lose it. I mean, people that go to casino, you know, when you lose, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not. It's not a good feeling. And I would come home, and you know, she dealing with her own stuff in the in the room by herself. We started sleeping separately. We slept separately for the last probably year of our relationship. Damn. And it was very difficult. We were both dealing with some crazy depression and. I think there were both times. There were times at the end of the relationship that both of us tried to snap out of it to get the other person to snap out of it, but the other person wasn't ready at the time. And um, ultimately, it resulted in Lou impromptly moving out. <laughs> she did impromptly move out, and that was, of course, another for me. It was another hard thing to deal with because I felt like you left me with everything. You left me, you know, here, which I don't know anybody, and I moved here for you. And I'm getting stuck with, you know, the dealings of it, the lease and all of that stuff. And I just can't just, you know, pack up and go anymore because of the sacrifice. Oh, because I was trying to figure out how she just packed up and left. She could do that because her parents and, well, I don't know if her parents are alive, but um, all her family is there. So she had somewhere to go. That's just how it means. And that's probably why she just left because it was probably like, you know, I don't want to keep putting you through this. And you can't just up and leave, so I'd rather you just be here by yourself, since we already by ourselves anyway. You know what I'm saying? Already, I was in a position to do that anymore. So it was a lot of pain on both sides. Um, of course, I because I resented Lou, I definitely was not the kindest to her. And mm -hmm. there came a point in time where, honestly, people in, in the actual quote-unquote TTG family I started to, to deal with them more. Like we would be in the house together, but I would deal with them more because we were not able to communicate at all, at all. The YouTube was the last of our words. Just trying to exist and coexist with one another 
was difficult enough. So we were not worried about YouTube. We were not worried about any of those things. We weren't. And to piggyback on a little bit of what you said, like the impromptu move, that was a huge turning point in our relationship as well. Um, you guys, it was 110% impromptu. Um, it was definitely an emotional move. Um, however, this was an emotional thing. So um, it is an emotional thing. I mean, uh, it's an emotional thing. So it is. Friend, I'll to my friend now. So it is. Reflecting back on this a little, and hearing these words, I haven't seen her in a while. But um, it definitely was an impromptu move. And she said it. I felt like I couldn't handle what was happening within my own home. And I felt like she felt like for a year she couldn't handle what was happening within her own home. So... You don't want to watch the person you love going to that shit. And that was the biggest thing for me. Because I, I find myself... Well, not now. Uh, we doing real good. But I used to find myself saying, like, I don't want to see you like that. Or I can't bear to watch you like this. Or, like, you know what I'm saying? You just don't want to see your partner suffer. And a lot of times we feel as though we can help. And, you know, sometimes you can't. But what does help is talking about that shit. I will say that. Like like exposing all of those those skeletons. I can't I can't tell y'all how good of a feeling that is. And you know, people always wonder like they always talk to me like, "Damn, Nick, you know, you was able to say that in front of thousands of people. I don't give a fuck." <laughs> you know, I just did a class with somebody like um she was like, I want that type of confidence. And I keep telling y'all, I can't, y'all can't pay me to give you confidence. You know what I'm saying? I could be a coach to you and drill your ass and tell you the truth about yourself. I can do that. But truly the, the decision comes from you. You know what I'm saying? And you can't help people be confident. But me, I'd rather be real than not. Because what not being real got me in a bad situation. So I ain't got no other choice but to be real. Being real has made me feel way better than anything else. You know what I'm saying? And being real, being transparent, and just putting it all out on the table. Sometimes all we got is y'all. And that's what y'all don't know. Like, y'all think y'all got us? Shit. Boy, when I'm going through some things, I just want to go live with y'all sometimes. You don't even know what the fuck happened before I even got on this camera. You know, a lot of times I tell y'all, though, my stomach hurt, you know what I'm saying, angry, just seeing my grandma, you know. I actually, um, we'll get into that. But, you know, it's a lot going on in our lives, y'all. And shout out to the people who don't judge and just, you know, we all just go through it together. You know, I respect that. I love the league that, that has been created. I love y'all. We go through our shit together. I don't judge y'all. Y'all got some shit going on. I try my best to help if I can. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, shit real out here. Shit is very much real out here. You haven't watched for So we basically talked about the general reasons that we broke up, like the overall reason. But then there was that uh, straw that broke the camel's back, right? <laughs> and that was... Point of no return. Right. Why the hell does camera look like this? Did y'all video look like this? That's why we couldn't come back from... I mean, on y'all end? What it is. It looked great. Um, what, what was that for you? What, what happened? You let us know everything that happened for you. And then I will say everything that happened for me. Because we obviously have different opinions of what happened to his day. <laughs> okay, so to me, the straw that broke the camel's back is pretty much, as you guys know, we lived together. And as you all were already informed, there came a point towards the end where she and I, we virtually, we, we did not talk. We didn't, we saw each other in passing within this house, this house that we're recording in right now, my home. And what I started to notice was, even though we weren't sleeping together, we, we for the longest of times, we weren't sleeping together. She was out here, I was in the bedroom, but she was out here having a full life, <laughs> a complete life, um, up until four or five o'clock in the morning type of life. <laughs> um, I would get up for my three o'clock 
P, my 3 a.m. P, and she was either sleep on the phone or sleep on the phone with a group of women. And um, now this <laughs> group of women- You make it sound like I have a harem. No, no, she doesn't have a harem. She has really good friends. Um, this group of women, amazing women. Um, I knew this at the time. I still know this at the time. Um, however, I was not in a mental space to share that part of Tay. Um, why? Because I had no parts of Tay at that point. So even though I was a part of this group of women initially, I started to see like, damn, hold on, me and Tay, we're not in a good space. And she's, she's really, really, really all of her extra time that the little bit of time that we did interact, it was now gone, you guys. Why? Because she was waking up on the phone with these women. She was going to sleep on the phone with these women. She was texting these women all day. There was no... Well, I understand because these women have taken TT away from me. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm happy y'all talk to her. We all need somebody to talk to. I go live with y'all. They be on the phone all day. That's, I love it. <laughs> space for it. I, was just, I knew y'all was coming. Hey, how you doing? You want to eat? There was, was no space like... for it. And I saw myself mentally just declining. You guys, I was not eating. I was drinking even more than what the hell I already began to do. And she put us on I looked up in my house, sure does. in this house. <laughs> and I know, I knew I couldn't do it anymore. I knew that that the environment was going to become me. too mentally toxic for me. Um, I was going to literally go deeper and deeper and deeper into my depression. If I keep waking up at three o'clock and hear her on the phone, keep waking up and seeing all of this stuff, I felt replaced. I felt completely replaced. Before we had a fighting chance, I felt like um, <clears throat> as traumatic as our relationship was, and I'm so sorry to say it to you guys, but our relationship was quite traumatic. As traumatic as it was, I felt like the trauma all was a kind of like a battle. And I felt like finally the dust was starting to settle. We got through COVID. We got through. We all, all need somebody to talk to for real. I get my conversation out through y'all. You know what I'm saying? So I was actually happy when um, TT told me. I know some of y'all might be lost, but TT speaks to a group of y'all in the TCG chat, in the, in the chat. Every day. And they be on the phone all day long. But I am never replaced. So if I walk up, if I need anything, if I, whatever, she acknowledges me. She definitely um, can play both roles as being a good friend to them and being a, a lover to me. You know what I'm saying? In that regard, she never, you know doesn't acknowledge me. I never feel like, oh my God, she's just talking to them all day and now she ain't paying me no attention. I never, I've never felt like that since the beginning. The craziness that we got through in our relationship and I, I personally felt like the dust was settling. However, a group of women came into the picture. Now you guys, these, this, these were, you know, like women, a group of women came into her life that I was not comfortable with. Um, seen as though we were in the state that we were in. So one day, no, honestly, some of you probably heard the night before I decided to make this decision. If you were present on her live, yeah. the night before <laughs> I decided to leave, and this is me being so transparent with you guys, I was on this balcony right now and I was eavesdropping you guys, completely eavesdropping. I was eavesdropping on one of her lives because why? She doesn't talk to me. She talks to these women all day. So I'm in the lab like, what are you guys talking about? And you guys all saw some things I did not want to see. However, they were completely warranted. That was a single woman at the time that I saw them. However, that's what I needed. I needed to see that single woman moving as a single woman. And that broke the straw for me. I came off of this balcony and you guys, I slammed that door so hard. You broke that the door. She blame. was on live. And I knew that was the end for me. I knew I would never do such a, such a thing. Um, that was horrific. It was so unbecoming of me. However, I knew that if I stayed, it would be more episodes like that. So I had to leave. So I packed up my stuff and I left. Yes. So from my perspective, yeah. obviously I have to work, right? I, if we're not working on YouTube and I do have other things that I do, guys, yes, I'll t say it all the time. I'm into stocks. I'm into trading cards. I'm into those things. Mm -hmm. But a big part of our income, to be totally transparent, was YouTube. 
So with Lou and I not being able to complete YouTubes because of all the situations we were going through, I had to find another platform where I could make up for that portion of the income. I started looking at other things. I started working more on the trading cards for a while. I did the trading cards for like a strong six months and I did it and it was great, but I didn't like going to the post office that much, which was because we had a lot of packages. You know, there was a lot of packages. She would still help me with the packages in the times that we were better and stuff like that. Um, but that was taxing on me and I wanted to use my personality, you know, to generate income because that's, that's what I feel like I'm personally good at. So I went to TikTok and I really started to grow a lot on TikTok. And in growing on TikTok, I got to connect with a lot of you guys um, that followed me to TikTok or found me on TikTok. And because I'm live streaming, as opposed to it being like this, where you guys can just leave comments, but we don't really have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, on TikTok, I was able to start developing friendships, which I desperately needed because I'm out here in Delaware. Um, no communication with her. Don't have my friends and family around me, and I'm 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 trying to will myself not to go to the casino. So when I found myself with these group of women who were basically the moderators for our live stream, we used to live stream together a lot, and then we made that an individual thing. Again, once we were struggling more in our relationship and the moderators of that stream, I started to grow closer because I had to talk to him about, you know, what's happening in the stream and stuff like that. And that grew to other conversations. In fact, she was the first person that really talked to them. I didn't even talk to them like that, but she, cause she know I'm not, I'm not a social person, but you know, she encouraged me to do that. And in doing that, I fell in love with them. I fell in love with all of them. I still, they're still my friends to this day. And, um, I felt like personally they were helping me, one, cope with the fact that I was so lonely out here, and two, they were helping me stop myself from gambling because I had something to distract myself. I couldn't distract myself with Lou. I was getting burnt out from doing sports cards. I, I wanted to, you know, feel something, feel uplifted. So yes, it's true what she said. I definitely prioritized them over her um, because by the time she wanted to speak with me, was I was already too far gone. I had yeah. waited for me personally so long for her, for her to show up, basically, for me. And by the time she was ready to show up for me, I felt like she was only showing up for me because now there was another group of people that, that could actually, yeah, that could actually fill a portion of the spot that I needed her to fill. That they could at least take up, take up some of my time so that I wouldn't struggle with the gambling because I, you know, I would communicate to Lou like I'm triggered. Like this, this is this is not good for me. Like whenever we get into bad arguments and Lou's really good at the silent treatment. That I, I, I it's hard for me to deal with the silent treatment. I don't. It's like I have abandonment issues because of like things that went on with my dad and stuff like that. And then you know me coming out to my mom and her initially not taking to it. I have abandonment issues with people in general. So like if I feel abandoned in a moment, I'm triggered. And because I had a quote unquote new addiction, it would trigger me to go there, to the casino, to, uh, to f avoid feeling abandoned. Like, at least I have this. So, who child? So, I know, right? yeah, so there's a lot to unpack. I never really said it out loud. Breathe. Yeah, so, um, with all of that happening, by the time I found these group of women, and they don't, don't like, for me, they were like angels, kind of like. So I did spend a lot of my time getting to know them and being in the group because I needed that to save myself. But Lou was over here on the other end. You know, she was waking up. She was, I'm not gonna lie y'all, she started to wake up out of her depression. But by the time she started to do that, I felt like I was depressed now. And I, I, I couldn't help her. I couldn't show up for her because I was tired. I didn't wanna show up for her anymore, quite honestly. Um, I need pe needed people to show up for me. Mm -hmm. So there would be times where she would definitely need attention and stuff like that, and I didn't want to give it to her. I gave it to the group of girls. I did. And as a result, she did uh -huh. see things on the live that disappointed her. I know that for a fact. Things that had never been part of our relationship before. Ever. Right. Because I was I was starting yeah, to feel no my, yeah, I was starting to feel myself a little bit. I finally had friends. I didn't have friends before. I was lonely for a long time in my life and I was like, okay, I'm single, 
because we were single by that point in time. We were very single. What yeah, she we did, were single. She had every yeah, to do. I wasn't doing it because we were in a yeah, relationship. I no. was single. There was no cheating. She right. Had everything she had a right to do. But it was just like I was flirtatious, and she was never used to see me be flirtatious with anybody. So with that, she was right. That that door slammed, and that was the end of us living together. Um, I was never homeless. She was never homeless because that's a popular story because one day I was streaming out of my car because I said I wanted to do a road trip in my car and suddenly I became homeless. I've had this apartment the entire time. Y'all have never been homeless. Um, but yeah, it was, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And uh, TikTok was the straw that broke camel's uh, back. We ain't gonna blame TikTok like that, y'all. See, no, no, no. Tick, no, 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 no. Girl, no. I don't think TikTok was it because like if you are in your funk and I cannot get you out of it and you giving me the silent treatment and you going in a room and we not sleeping together and you getting drunk as hell and just basically passing out drunk as hell at that, I can't even help you. That's something that's past my, uh, uh, you know, expertise. So now it's like... Because it makes you angry. So it's like, I don't want to get angry. They probably not even angry people. They don't seem like it. So they probably didn't get angry. So she was just trying to find every way to just exist. You know what I'm saying? Without her. Not even coexist. Like, exist without her. And don't nobody want to go gamble their money away all the goddamn time. And, you know, that was... my Mine became the bar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to go to the bar... Um, and I was drinking, um, but I never, I never drink and just be like sloppy ass drunk. You know what I'm saying? I used to, uh, but I don't do that anymore. Um, but I, I, I still like to go to the bar and just have conversation because I, I feel like it's time for me to start networking. You know what I'm saying? I am really into networking now and at the time, I was trying to start it then, but I couldn't start because I was depressed, too. So, um, I'm just saying, like, the thing for her was uh, TikTok and, and the casino. Mine was the bar. Oh, yeah, definitely. Follow her, you guys. You were Follow her on stream. TikTok, the stream too. Stream ridiculous. Stream, um, baby. No, it wasn't TikTok. <laughs> Let me refer rephrase that. I was about to rephrase it to something else, but I'm not. <laughs> no, I was about to say me, but you know what? It's, it's not, not necessarily exactly. Yeah, you can't I, I, that's blame something within my journey I can't do. It was not just me. Mm-mm. However, I hear everything you're saying. And yeah. Like, they cups I was empty wish and we did not do it like this on the camera so that I can, you know, but hearing everything you're saying, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. I hear you. But I knew that's what you felt. So, yeah. I'm sorry, too. I'm sorry that we couldn't be there for each other at the yeah. same time. At the same time, because we were always, right. yeah, yeah. We were always ready at different times. different times. But I know the next valid question would be, so is this fixable? Are you guys getting back together? And, and all of that stuff. And, and I will let or ask Lou to answer that first. The answer is that's literally not anywhere in my mind. I'm enjoying at 34, in 2023, the most peaceful time I've ever had with this woman. Um, You guys, the first few months of our relationship was just buried in each other, if I could just say that. If not the first year, we were just buried, intertwined. So we had no time to look up and to see each other. And I honestly feel like, even though it's been years, you guys know I, I've been with, I've been in this woman's life for, for quite some time now, and I feel like finally now I'm seeing her. So I'm so thankful for it. So to answer that question, is it fixable? My personal answer is gonna be no, because I don't wanna fix what I had. I don't wanna fix that, I want that to be gone. I'm hoping that our friendship can just flourish and we both be good for ourselves, so. Yes, and I think that the most accurate thing that has been stated in this video altogether is, this is the most peaceful Lou and I have ever been. So to say, is it fixable? I feel like we're fixing it now. No, I think it's, yeah, I think it's being <laughs> I feel, fixed. Yes, I feel like we're fixing it now and realizing that we were never friends with one another. We never really never. got to learn each other's, you know. And t- that's the beauty with me and TT. We was friends first. 
you know, and that's why that respect hit a little different. And granted, we are way more aggressive. Uh, I've noticed when other people go through shit, you don't really see their aggression. But we Leos anyway, girl. We just was going to naturally be aggressive anyway. But um, we um, definitely was friends first, you know. And I feel like that's what matters. You got to be friends. You can't like when you when you're not friends and you going off that that first high, girl. It always come down. You always got to come down after that high. So fuck that. Lovers and enemies. Yes, yeah. We that's exactly what we were. We were lovers or we were enemies. We were never friends to one another. No, we between. never treated each other with compassion. Unless we were loving, and that's unless not, we were happy. No, when we were sad, you really could tell if two people are loving with how they treat each other when they're angry with one another. We and that's, not. huh? That's it, we did not. Yeah, when we were angry with one another, we might as well have been strangers on the street. Strain, worse than strangers. Yeah. Mm. So. Literally, blood and crips. Okay. Seriously. Hey, yeah. Come here. You got a You got a poo? Like, Seriously? Like, why are you on my set? <laughs> right. Mm. It was bad. Yeah. I'd rather have been a stranger's loop. Mask is currently unavailable. Why you gotta keep talking to us like this? Why is the TV Why do you talking? feel like you have something to say to us? Yo, this, this TV really is nosy. No, my stomach ain't hurt. <laughs> so, yeah. So, to ask if this is fixable, because I, I get that question a lot in my streams. Um, this is our version of fixing it. We're learning how to be good friends to one another because at the end of the day, we did have a lot of fun with one another and we're learning how to respect each other. We're learning how to not have possession over one another because there was mm -hmm. we had a very possessive relationship. Mm -hmm. And we're learning, you know, just how to be good people to one another for the first time in our entire in our entire relationship. Don't get me wrong, y'all. The things that you guys saw were real. were real. Everything was real. The love that we had was extremely passionate. We had a very passionate yeah. love affair. But the problem with a very passionate love affair is there's a downside to it. Mm -hmm. And that downside, of course, is not something that anybody's going to record and display. Just like you wouldn't go to work and display, tell everybody your husband sucks and all. I mean, I don't know. Some of y'all might do that. But... I thought she was about to say something. <laughs> like, you don't go to work and, and, and just tell everybody how horrible everything, the, the horrible parts of your life. You try to just, ex, you know, you share some things, you know, but not much. But what I can say, I hope you guys can appreciate, and I never say this, is that when we were not good, you guys did not see us. Right. We never forced ourselves in a bad condition onto yes, you Yes, that's true. That's You know what? That's the reason why everything was real. You're 100% like, right. So, I'm trying to figure out why can I say that confidently. So real. The reason why we had so many breaks, y'all, is because the breaks <laughs> was us. were the bad times. And we did mention that when we had the breaks. Like, we would come back like you guys know. Listen, it wasn't great. Every single time we came back from a break, it like, wasn't hey, great. Hey, guys. Like, no. We, yeah. we were so transparent with you guys with also respecting our own privacy. Goodness gracious, my grandmother. Privacy. Speak, I said privacy. Our own privacy. Same tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, yes, you guys. I feel like this is fixing it. So no, the answer is no. Um, it cannot be. That cannot be fixed. No, there was no fixing. What we're going to be because I don't think she'll ever be out of my life. I hope to always have her as a friend. Um, so yeah. yes. Now the last question is, what will happen to the channel? See, the beautiful thing about this is mm. we're in a special place in our situation where. We live five minutes from one another. We've always lived five minutes from one another. She didn't move far, y'all. She moved five I'm minutes away. I can right. walk. I can walk right now if I need right. to. Take. She moved five minutes away. Um, but the beautiful thing about our relationship now is that I haven't ever seen content of two exes trying to navigate life. Are exes even supposed to be friends? This is a hell yeah. Because y'all were supposed to be friends in the first place. What y'all doing is refriending each other. That's what y'all doing. Y'all learning now instead of y'all y'all going backwards. But it's a beautiful thing. Like for y'all to continue to work together. Because it sounds like to me they don't want each other to be down bad. Sis still need a bag to take care of her bills. And so do she. So hell yeah. We exes working it out. 
Absolutely, I think they're doing a great job. The things that, we, but this is these are the things that we will be able to journey through Questions in this, I need answers. right? Can we, uh, can we even be friends? Can we deal with whenever somebody new pops up into one of our lives? Well, that's the somebody, question. You know? Do we have somebody new in our lives already? <laughs> Yo. Oh, no. Yo, y'all. The next video. I'm gonna tell y'all what the hell I think Lou is doing. Cause I think Lou. Hold on, why do you need to tell me what the next yeah, video is doing? Hold on. Not. I'll tell y'all right now what I think Lou is doing out in these streets. And I'm sure she'll have her opinion. Well, I'll tell y'all what, what, what Big Tay Tay, the love doctor, is doing. Oh! <laughs> Ain't thought I knew about that. Ain't thought I knew about that. I see, I'm not my business. I'm not my business. I like it. I don't know, people think shit like this is drama. No, shit, this shit is beautiful. Like, for people to be able to just have a conversation and actually be able to coexist with one another and knowing certain things, I think it's amazing. But y'all let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Call me bias. I mean, I'm experiencing it, so, you know, we over here thug. But, oh, good. They found something, you know what I'm saying, that they could work out and not leaving each other in the in the dirt because to be honest um you know i would never just leave tt assed out on nothing i don't give a fuck what the situation is and that's what i was trying to tell people because y'all remember when i met tt she didn't leave me assed out and i was absolutely assed out okay so she never left me assed out i never leave her ass out assed out you know never so am i still tired now nah, we good friend she done, she done fixed me. TT brought me back to life. Thank Jesus. But anyway, y'all let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Um, everybody go through their shit. No judgment here. I pray that they get everything that they need um, from themselves and, you know, one another. And, and I'm going to be watching the journey. I love it. But all right. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hell yeah.